What's going on guys? In this video, we're going to be learning how to apply descriptive statistics to our data frame. Now, what I mean by descriptive statistics, I mean something like getting the max, the min, the median, mean, the standard deviation, etc. of our data frames or our series. And Pandas makes this actually very easy. So you can extract a lot of information very quickly with Pandas. So let's just dive right into this video. So the first thing I'll do is import Pandas as PD. And once again, I will, let me just correct this, but I will read the CSV, uh, set the index, and sort the index. All right, that's done. Now, let's take a look at all the columns. So as you can see, we have a bunch of different columns, and we can apply descriptive statistics on these columns or the data frame itself. So let's take a look at some of the things you can do. Now, df.count, what does this do? It brings back the non-null values. Now we haven't gone over NAN or null values, but basically sometimes uh, import data, there will be empty slots or there will be corrupted data. And in those corrupted or empty slots, Pandas fills it in with NAN. Because a data frame, you have to have the rows and columns have to be filled with some sort of value. You can't have empty uh, rows or columns. So if it's empty, you get filled with something called NAN or not a number, and we'll see that in future videos. So df.count counts the non-null or non-nan numbers, and these are all the, the series or columns, and you can see they all have different sizes when it comes to non-null numbers. Pandas will fill all the blank or corrupted numbers with nan, so you'll actually have a data frame that is filled with all numbers. Some of them are nan numbers, which we can't really uh, do anything with. So here are the non NAN numbers, and you'll see they have different numbers, 4897, 4867, etc. So DF count is a very quick way to see where you have NAN numbers. Um, the other thing you can do is you can actually use uh, df.shape, if I'm not mistaken, to see how many rows and columns you have. So you can tell which ones are filled, like uh, movie Facebook likes, 4916, they match, so Movie Facebook Likes actually has all of the column values as non-null values. So basically it has no NAN values because it's 4916 and the real shape of the data frame is 4916. All right, so this is a very quick way to take a look at your non-null values. Now you could also get the mean of all of these series within a data frame. So easily I can get the mean and now you'll notice that some of the series are missing because you can't take the mean of columns that have string values. So with df.mean, if it doesn't have a column with string values, df.mean will actually calculate the mean of that column. All right. Now you have df.median. If I run this, now you'll get the median of each of the series. And remember, this is only numerical columns, string columns, don't have a median, so you can apply df.median to uh, string columns. We also have df.max. You can get the max of all of these series that are numerical. Now you'll notice this EO2, and um, it's not in the cleanest format. You can actually change the printing options of pandas. I'll have to look into that. I think I have a script somewhere that actually changes it so you don't use uh, E, and it actually uh, prints out the full value. So. There's a print options to change this uh, EO2 to the full value. Now you have df.min. It's another one, just getting the min of each of the series. And if you want to get everything put together, you have something called df.describe, which is a very quick way to get a complete overview of your data frame. So you get the count, the mean, the STD, the min, and then you get the uh, quantiles, 25%, 50%, uh, 75, and max. So very easily you can do all that for each of the series. All right, now you can apply all of these to series as well. And there's actually a lot of methods you can apply to data frames and series. I'm going over some of the basic ones. So once again, you can apply this to series as well. Count 4897, you can get the max, the standard deviation. Now the unique, unique is pretty cool. You get all of the unique values. So with color, let me go back up here. Um, actually, what I can do is something here. Uh, df.head. 
with color, it seems like there's only one value, color, but you can get all of the unique values within the uh, color series. So there's color, there's black and white, and then there's nan, uh, not a number. So unique is pretty cool in the sense that you get all the unique values from a series. Now value counts. So sometimes there's a lot of repetition. So here we have color that's repeated multiple times, black and white might be repeated multiple times, and nan that might be repeated multiple times. If you want to get the counts of each of those, you can do that with value counts. So n.unique gives you the unique values, but value counts actually gives you the values associated. So a color appears four, six, nine, three times within the series, and black and white appears 204 times within the series. So value counts is very important. Now nan is not included because remember nan is like some pseudo value that um, that's not really a value. So it's called uh, not a value, or, I'm sorry, not a number. So it's not included in some of these methods. All right, now count. Actually, we just did count. Yeah, so we already did count. Okay, so I just wanted to uh, go over count again because count gives you all of the NAN number or all of the true values. However, size is including the missing values as well. So it includes the NANs. So as you can see, there's a difference because count doesn't include the NAN values, but a color size does include the NAN values. You can also sort the values. So with budget, it's going to be sorted numerically. So 218, 111, and I think this is in thousands. You would have to look at the original data and the sort of information that comes with the original data uh, regarding what each column represents. So that's why it's very important to understand data even before putting it into a data frame. And now you can use sum. So it's one quick thing you can do is you sort all the values. You don't even need to sort all the values, but I want to show you that you can chain all these methods, which is a pretty cool feature of pandas but you can get the total sum of all of the budgets of all of the movies within this data set. And that's a huge number. Now you could also get the quantiles. For those that don't know what quantiles are, basically, I think my explanation should be correct, but you order everything and the 20th percentile of the ordered numbers, um, the value that you get at that portion will represent the 20% quartile. So basically it's saying you have 20% of the values within your distribution less than this, this number. So if we run this, we get the quantile equal to uh, 4 million, I'm assuming. So 20% of the values within this data set are less than 4 million or 400,000 or whatever. All right, so this was a quick introduction to descriptive statistics in pandas. And I'll see you guys in the next video.